I like how I'm doing kid core and you're doing mafia boss. I was told I look like I'm about to sell my siblings for some Turkish delight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Zelf on the Shelf. I'm Tanner. And I'm Sam. Apparently introducing ourselves is an important part of YouTube culture. It's something a new thing we've been doing. Uh, Someone commented saying they watched 10 of our videos before they knew Tanner's name, so, which we can't have. I like to be like that, just sort of an, an anonymous entity mm -hmm. floating around the internet. I'm actually a little bit warm, so. Oh, then um, my waistcoat comes out. <laughs> Pirate core. <laughs> I do it all. So we've got a fun video today. Well, it's a mix of fun and horrifying, but I think we're gonna have some fun and we're also going to be disturbed. <laughs> it's worse than I thought. There's there's more stuff out there than I realized, and I uh, just can't wait to share it with all of you today. <laughs> Yeehaw, can't wait to unpack all of this. <laughs> so, we're going to be talking about four things. Is there anything else we need to plug before we get into the video? Buy our candle. It smells so good. It's that time of year. We'll make you so cozy and happy like it makes me so cozy and happy every single day. It's banana, nut bread, and coconut. It's a soy wax and the company uses zero plastic in their packaging. We also have merch now. Thank you for those of you who have bought some. And other than that, support us on Patreon. Thank you to our patrons for being here. First thing that has been banned in Mormon bedrooms, birth control. Oh, of course. Of course. So basically ever since right the beginning, Presumably not with Joseph Smith, because Joseph Smith was realistically using <laughs> versions of birth control to hide the fact that he was doing polygamy while telling everyone that he was definitely not doing polygamy. I love, I love how Mormons are like, he couldn't have done this because the only way to have sex is penetrative uh, child making sex. There's no mm -hmm. other form. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh honey, this video is for you. <laughs> this is for you guys. And abortion was a thing that was practiced in that area. By uh, John C. Bennett, <laughs> his buddy. Yeah. Also, it was really interesting watching The Vow Season 2. If you haven't watched The Vow Seasons 1 and 2, highly recommend. Fascinating oh. cult documentary. Um, but the, just the similarities between Keith Raniere and Joseph Smith, like having sex with like mother-daughter pairs or two siblings, getting them to have abortions secretly and having the recruiter wife be the one that takes them to the abortion. Wow. Oh, very interesting. Anyway, as early as Brigham Young, we have endless quotes of church leaders saying that birth control is bad. I grew up, I remember in high school talking with friends and being like, oh, I will never use birth control. I'll mm -hmm. just have children. Well, I remember <laughs> when I was doing Institute in 2014, it must have been, the manual was anti-birth control. There was a birth control section. It was all just quotes from prophets, like these ones I'm reading today about how birth control is bad. So Brigham Young said... To check the inc and this is in the Journal of Discourses, by the way, church proof source. To check the increase of our race has its advocates among the influential and powerful circles of society in our nation and in other nations. The same practice existed 45 years ago and various devices were used by married persons to prevent the expenses and responsibilities of a family of children. Great, so he's literally saying in Joseph Smith's time, there was plenty of birth control available that people were using. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brigham, for settling that issue. <laughs> that which was practiced then in fear and against reproving conscience is now boldly trumpeted abroad as one of the best means of ameliorating the miseries and sorrows of humanity. I thought that was interesting because I do feel like, um, you know, poverty leads to a lot of misery and trauma and a big way to keep a family in poverty is having more children than that family can provide for. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting that he called that out. Also so funny that, um, of course, we're talking, he's one who believes that a woman's sole responsibility is to be churning out babies for all eternity. And he's, there's so many quotes attributed to Brigham Young where he's like, I don't care for the happiness of my wife. I don't care if she's happy or not. That's not what the plan of salvation is about. It's about her sustaining her husband. Me, the God on planet Earth who's going to be with El Elohim and my million wives. Like... Mm -hmm. So he said, the unnatural style of living, the extensive use of narcotics, the attempts to destroy and dry up the fountains of life are fast destroying the American element of the nation. It is passing away before the increase of the more healthy, robust, honest, and less sinful class of people, <laughs> which are pouring into the country daily from the old world. 
The wife of the servant man is the mother of eight or ten healthy children, while the wife of his master is the mother of one or two poor, sickly children, devoid of vitality and constitution. So anyway, very, very anti-birth control was Brigham. I mean, we gotta be having more and more babies to fight the wars. If we're not producing children, who's gonna, who's gonna die in the factories to make all our little devices and clothes and things? There's only so many orphans out there. <laughs> You've also got the first presidency in 1917 saying, Officers, members of the Relief Society, herein you have the word of the Lord on this subject. Can anything be clearer or more emphatic? It is a very strange thing that people can believe that the Lord of life could countenance for one moment the refusal of his children to comply with the first commandment of Adam and Eve. It is so easy to avoid parenthood if people wish to do so, even if selfishly. Men and women can remain unmarried. That's all there is to it. So he's basically saying, if you don't want kids, don't get married. But then they were also teaching that you're a menace to society if you didn't get married. So it's really not that simple. <laughs> he's like, that's all there is to it. You'll just be a social outcast. And I love sex. any time the Bible is brought up in regards to relationships, orientation, gender. It's like... Oh, thank you for citing this book of mythology that teaches that a woman was created from the rib of a man that's very informative about the nature of the world that we exist in. Oh, you mean when the talking snake convinced her to eat an apple and things went awry? Oh, wow. Like, thank you for the insight. What? <laughs> shows how fragile masculinity can be more than men coming up with the idea that woman was created from man's body when every man is born through a vagina. <laughs> Just... Incredible. Incredible. You know? um, so you got Apostle John A. Widstow saying, since birth control roots in a species of selfishness, the spiritual life of the user of contraceptives is also weakened. Women seem to become more masculine in thought <laughs> and action. Men more callous and reserved. Both husband and wife become more careless of each other and increasingly indifferent to the higher duties and joys of living. So it will change your personality if oh, you use yeah. birth control. Not oh, just yeah. hormonal birth control, because the men also become more callous and reserved. Wow. I love how what would make a so man... So everyone's becoming more masculine, is that the... <laughs> well, I love how it's like um, women become more masculine in thought and action. Men become more reserved. Because if a, a woman becoming more reserved would be ideal, <laughs> but a man becoming more reserved... Not good. That means she's talking and he's zipping, which we cannot have. Mm -hmm. So in general conference, sorry if I'm laboring this point with all these quotes, but I just need to make it clear that it was all throughout the ages. So 1969 in general conference, the prophet David O. McKay said, seeking the pleasure of conjugality without a willingness to assume the responsibilities of rearing a family is one of the onslaughts that now batter at the structure of the American home. The first presidency also released a statement in 1969 and said, uh, <laughs> love when they do that. The first presidency is being asked from time to time as to what the attitude of the church is regarding birth control. In order that you may be informed on this subject and that you may be prepared to convey the proper information to the members of the church under your jurisdiction, we have decided to give you the following statement. We seriously should regret that there should exist a sentiment or feeling among any members of the church to curtail the birth of their children. We have been commanded to multiply and replenish the earth, blah, 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 blah. We believe that those who practice birth control will reap disappointment by and by. Again, just want to hammer home that this wasn't just, um, you know, leaders being like, giving their opinion as men. This was like, the Lord told me this, and this is a first presidency statement. You know, this was coming as much as anything in the Mormon church can be seen as revelation from above. Like these teachings on birth control were, because it was every prophet time after time saying, the Lord has been so clear to me about this. And so wild how they'll actively teach that you should have kids, even if you can't afford it, even if mm -hmm. you can't provide They would teach us that all the time at BYU-Idaho. Oh, yeah. Little 20, 21-year-old students, even like 18, 19-year-old wives at BYU-Idaho are being told, don't, there's no reason to not have children. And then even if you can't afford them, you should have them. Mm -hmm. And even if you can't feed them, you should pay tithing. Mm-hmm. 
1972, Prophet Harold B. Lee in conference said, we declare it is a grievous sin before God to adopt restrictive measures in disobedience to God's divine command from the beginning of time to multiply and replenish. So did Joseph Smith break that commandment then when he didn't have children with the wives he was sleeping with but not? You would think so, especially as uh, multiplying and replenish the earth was the only scriptural justification for polygamy. He was trying to enjoy conjugality without the benefit of having and rearing children? Well, according to Prophet Harold B. Lee, he is going to reap the whirlwind of God's retribution for God will not be mocked. So, God sounds like a really chill and fun person. Yeah, I can't Great wait to parties. live with him again. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many more I could read, but all you need to know is that up until, you know, this, again, this was still in the manuals as recently, as far as I know, as 2014. So, Throughout church history, birth control has been taught as bad. And I think now members, I mean, members use birth control, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, And the adherence to those teachings has weakened. But I just think it's important that we all know this has been a very core part of Mormonism for most of its history and has never been disavowed in recent, you know, it's, it's still as far as anything in Mormonism can be seen as doctrine or the word of the Lord, it's still there. It's still that way. And it, it makes sense from an organizational s- standpoint, mm-hmm. like why you want all your members to have as many children as possible, because then you're literally co- creating customers who are ingrained from birth to buy into your system. Mm-hmm. It's the best way to create a self-sustaining economic system. Totally. So the second thing has been banned in Mormon bedrooms. I feel like a lot of you who are exploring already know this, but oral sex. Yay. Why can't you get pregnant from swallow? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you could, then it would be fine. <laughs> so in January 1982, the first presidency sent out a statement saying married persons should understand that if in their marital relations they are guilty of unnatural, impure, or unholy practices, they should not enter the temple unless and until they repent and discontinue any such practices. The First Presidency has interpreted oral sex as constituting an unnatural, impure, or unholy practice. Unnatural? Like, what? What I find so interesting about this is, I think there's like slightly different statistics, but I mostly see that (laughs) only around 20% of women can orgasm from, you know, classic PMV sex, which is what the church wants them to only do. So it's essentially codifying the idea that women should never have orgasms or, you know, only one in five get to. Oh, I, I experience regular grief on behalf of all the Mormon women who have ever lived, who have never, ever had Mm -hmm. good sex, have Mm -hmm. never orgasmed. That is so sad to me. I know. So the aftermath of this letter, which again, 1982, very recent when you think about it. Um, Also, I just want to say how they always want to have their cake and eat it too, which is being like, that is unnatural. And it's like, it's actually very natural. And they're like, well, that's because it's the natural man is an enemy to God. And it's like, which one is it? Also, I feel like we've mentioned this a few times before, but Yuval Noah Harari, who wrote Sapiens, has a really good quote about how anything that happens is by definition natural. Because anything that that can happen in this world... Mm -hmm is part of it. In that's the nature world. doing its thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you, to say that anything is unnatural. It's like looking at a it's like looking at a penguin and being like, that is unnatural. Birds are supposed to fly, not swim. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Sorry, reality doesn't conform to your tiny little box. Even with stuff that is like an aberration from the norm in a species, which oral sex in Homo sapiens is obviously not. Oh but yeah, look at the fucking chimps. Is, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Even stuff that is, it, it's ha- still happening in nature. It's not unnatural. What does it mean for something to be unnatural, you know? Anyway, so they sent out that letter in 1982. And the aftermath of that was that a lot of local leaders started asking people if they were having oral sex in their temple recommend interviews, which they hadn't previously done because um, I think it there was something in the manual that previously said, like, basically, don't ask two revealing questions to married couples about their sex life. But they started to after that, which is understandable because the first presidency said to the bishops, like, we consider oral sex to be something that would be a reason people shouldn't go to the temple. So, of course, in temple recommend interviews, they're going to start asking that. For those of you who are not Mormon, have no knowledge of Mormonism, a temple recommend interview is kind of like the quiz you have to pass to be able to go into the Mormon temples where you answer questions like, do you keep the word of wisdom, aka do you not drink coffee? And you have to go through the temple in order to receive all the benefits of 
membership in this life and to be with your eternal mm-hmm. family exalted with Christ to in get the to hereafter. Heaven, basically, yeah. Or to like attend a wedding in Mormonism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is so this is just this is one of those things that people who aren't raised who aren't indoctrinated from a child to see this as normal are like like what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like I'm not in a cult. I just meet with a man who asks me if I have oral sex to make sure that with I'm my worthy husband. To- <laughs> <laughs> the first presidency also started getting a bunch of letters from members asking why they were getting involved in what goes on in their married bedrooms. Which, Good question. Thank God that <laughs> happened. Nine months after that letter was sent out, the first presidency sent out another letter to local leaders re-emphasizing that they should never inquire into personal intimate matters involving marital relations between a man and his wife. They also said, if in the course of such interviews, a member asks questions about the propriety of specific conduct, You should not pursue the matter, but should merely suggest that if the member has enough anxiety about it to ask, the best course would be to discontinue it. That's going to do really well in a population that is notorious for scrupulosity, isn't it? Get the bishops out of the bedroom. I know, seriously. Um, So this is kind of another one of those things where, you know, the church puts out another statement to be like, okay, we can't keep receiving letters from members, (laughs) you know, being mad at us for this. So just like keep it on the DL, but just know that it is still wrong. It is very bad. And that's never something that's been revoked. Again, this was something that came from the first presidency saying like, the Lord believes that this is bad. This is an official, this is what... Jesus Christ is speaking through his representatives on the earth today. Everything going on in the world, climate change, (laughs) racial strife. God wants to make sure that people Mm -hmm. aren't having too good of a time with their married partners. This is wild. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Leave it to the God who uh, sends an angel with a flaming sword to intervene to make sure that a prophet will definitely have sex with a 14-year-old, but can't intervene for children dying of cancer or children being sold into slavery. Those things are just not as high on God's priority And God won't clarify why Joseph Smith had to marry all these teenagers, but he will clarify about (laughs) oral like multiple times. So in response to one letter that they got, President... Harold B. Lee Uh, stated... Just for reference, this is the guy who taught us the timeless truth that people born with physical and mental handicaps did were born that way because they were less valiant in the pre-mortal existence. Love the word of God. It's beautiful. So he said in response to a letter, I was shocked to have you raise the question about oral lovemaking in the genital area (laughs) among married couples. Ah, That is the worst description of a sexual act I have ever heard. How can you- Oral lovemaking in the genital area (laughs) among married couples. We should just put that on a t-shirt. Or on a mug. I do not support. (laughs) I do not support oral love me. (laughs) He goes on to say, Heaven forbid any such degrading activities which would be abhorrent in the sight of the Lord for any Latter-day Saint to engage in any kind of perversions of this sacred God-given gift of procreation would be sure to bring down the condemnation of the Lord, whom we would offend were we to engage in any such practice. Having sex with him would not just be bad and distasteful, it would be horrifying. I know, like, way to tell us you've never got a BJ. Oh my god. I also wonder about how this how the members would have extrapolated this because it, it you know like what about using your hands is that bad and then at that point it's like Unholy how are you impure. really how are you going to get things off the ground i mean it's just <laughs> it's bonkers to me oh my and why God. is the mouth considered different from the it i mean it's just that whole thing of like um conservative thinkers they've shown are more prone to disgust so mm-hmm. i'm like maybe these leaders they genuinely did feel dis i mean there's a long history of men thinking it's like disgusting to go down on a woman. You know, we've even who just that tell rapper? us you don't like women. Wasn't there some rapper who like admitted DJ to the fact? Khaled or- DJ it- Khaled explains why he doesn't it go was down DJ on women. Khaled. Damn, that's so embarrassing that he would say that publicly. <laughs> what was his explanation? Wait, explains why. A woman should praise the man, the king. He says. 
If you holding it down for your woman, I feel like the woman should praise, and a man should praise the queen, but you know my way of praising is called, haha, how was dinner? You like the house you're living in? You like all them clothes you're getting? I'm taking care of your family, I'm taking care of my family, you know, I'm putting in the work. You know, each to their own, and if he's, if he just likes to, if he has a worship kink where he's the one always being worshipped, fine, and if his partner's fine with that, fine, I guess, but to say women should be this way always, like everyone should do this, why have people got a... <laughs> turn their things into things that everyone should do. I mean, the whole scheme of this thing, right, is to keep people trapped in vicious shame cycles. Mm -hmm. So they're hating themselves and hating the part of themselves that is experiencing these uh, forbidden lusts and desires and temptations. So they have to squash it down and it's so evil. They're victims of this whole unconscious virus of religion as anybody else because it just preys off of that of like keeping people so at war with their own nature mm -hmm. that they stay under the control of this organization so let's move on even though i can stay on move on, on from uh, oral love making in the genital region among married couples how can i <laughs> yeah the video is peaked too soon we should have saved that one to the end okay this one this section is crazy though so three something that's been banned in Mormon bedrooms, um, whether you're married or not, is masturbation. Oh, of course. Such so, a pernicious evil of the ages. Yes. As Prophet Spencer W. Kimball said, prophets anciently and today condemn masturbation. When have prophets in, like, did the prophets in the Bible talk about that? Uh, someone got in trouble for spilling their seed onto mm. the ground and not into a woman. Got it. Who was probably okay. their sister. <laughs> the Bible is so full of incest. I Anytime someone's like, the Bible is the, word, the authority on morality or relationships. I'm like, you've never read the Bible because that shit is whack. So he said, masturbation induces feelings of guilt and shame, which is funny because... No, churches like produce yeah. <laughs> feelings of guilt and shame. It is detrimental to spirituality. It indicates slavery to the flesh, not that mastery of it, and the growth toward godhood, which is the object of our mortal life. This is also funny because the whole thing with sex is like, it's unnatural. And then it's like, kids start at a certain point like even if they don't know what it is mm -hmm. like how many people have you heard say that they were doing it as a kid and they didn't even know what it was until they heard in church what it was so mm -hmm. clearly it is something that just comes to us naturally as we grow up mm -hmm. anyway um, it has been observed in animals our modern prophet has indicated that no young man should be called on a mission who is not free from this practice while we should not regard this weakness as the heinous sin which some other sexual practices are, it is of itself bad enough to require sincere repentance. What is more, it too often leads to grievous sin, even to that sin against nature, homosexuality. For done again, <laughs> animals are gay, so I don't see how it's against nature. But. And you heard it here, folks. Wanking will turn you gay. <laughs> Done in private, it often evolves into mutual masturbation, practiced with another person of the same sex, what, and what then that mean, into bestie? total homosexuality. Doing it alone leads to not be doing it alone. <laughs> if you're doing it in private, you are by definition not doing it with somebody else. So this is where things get really wild. Spencer W. Kimball was also around this time giving a lot of advice to church leaders to help them, you know, get the young men, probably young women too, in their ward off the masturbation train. So he said, this self-gratifying activity will cause one to lose his self-respect and feel guilty and depressed. As a person feels spiritually unclean, he loses interest in prayer, blah, blah, blah. Be assured that you can be cured of your difficulty. Many have been, both male and female, and you can be also if you determine mm. that it must be so. Determination is the first step. Really quick, he's just like, I'm observing that people who find pleasure start taking less interest in the church, but you can be cured of this yeah. by not experiencing any pleasure outside of the church or inside in the way that your body was created and the way that you naturally orient toward other beings. This is so fucking twisted. This is from the guy and the religion that teaches that adultery or fornication, sexual sin is next to murder. That having sex with someone you're not married to is almost as bad as killing them. That is so fucking crazy and twisted. It's about to get worse. He's giving this advice. He's saying, if you sincerely want to stop wanking, you'll be able to. It's just about being so sincere. And then he gives these guidelines that he thinks young men should follow when trying to stop wanking. 
One, never touch the intimate parts of your body except during normal toilet processes. <laughs> That's the only exception he gives. He doesn't even mention the shower, which I found interesting. So it's not not, not even once. It's only during normal toilet activities. <laughs> Get that on a shirt. <laughs> I only touch myself during normal toilet activities. I'm a recovering masturbator. <laughs> if that's like a shirt that only new name Noah would have the balls to wear. <laughs> no one wish... else has the guts. No one else has the guts. <laughs> Avoid being alone as much as possible. Find good company and stay in this good company. Unless they're people who you're attracted to, I assume. <laughs> Two. If you are associated with other persons having the same problem, you must break off their friendship. Never associate with other people having the same weakness. I feel like you're going to have a very small pool of friends if that's the case. No more hanging with the wank gang. (laughs) (laughs) No more wanking Wednesdays. (laughs) With the boys. (laughs) Wednesdays are for the wanking boys. Don't suppose that two of you will quit together. You never will. I'm like, what has gone on in Spencer W. Kimball's past? Because the things he... He, he lays that is out so the, specific. He lays out the kinkiest scenarios as if they're mainstream. And I suppose I wasn't around in the 70s, but I just can't imagine it was as big of it. Like, that doesn't seem like it was the main thing that was going This on. feels autobiographical. Do not try to quit wanking with your best friend, Kevin. <laughs> you cannot overcome it together. You'll uh, wake each other to death, <laughs> to spiritual ruin. <laughs> you must get away from people of that kind. Just to be in their presence will keep the problem foremost in your mind. To be around other masks. <laughs> this is so wild. The problem must be taken out of your mind, for that is where it really exists. Your mind must be on other and more wholesome things. Turn it off. Focus on other things. Also to say that the problem only exists in your mind when they're also aware that like a lot of people who are really sexually repressed will wake up in the night and just kind of do it in a semi-conscious state. So how can you say it's just in your mind? Yeah, and you have like a when there's kind bodily of a natural... fluid that is building up and at night regularly and needs again, to be... Yeah, and again, when kids do it and they don't even know what it is, how can you say it's in the mind? Another piece of advice he has, when you bathe, do not admire yourself in a mirror. <laughs> If I look at myself in the mirror, it's game over. <laughs> Wanking immediately. I actually, I mean, uh, I think about this often that as a Mormon, I seldom looked at myself in the mirror. Wow. I like was not really. Because you worried you'd be like, damn. It, yeah, I just, you know, get those garments on, get out. It was just kind of in the mm-hmm. mindset. It wasn't even really a conscious So thing, your own but... nakedness felt sexual in some way. Yeah, my body is just inherently bad and wrong. Mm. Never stay in the bath more than five or six minutes. <laughs> After six minutes, it's seven, seven minutes. minutes in heaven. <laughs> After that with yourself. Just long enough to bathe and dry and dress and then get out of the bathroom into a room where you will have some member of your family present. <laughs> Father, will you come sit in my room with me so I'm not tempted to masturbate? Obvious point, but you know if you someone says to you, don't think about a pink elephant, it's all you'll think about. I mean, this whole approach is just that on steroids, isn't it? Because if you're constantly, like, even, like, the length of your baths are being affected by, or, or, like, looking at yourself in the mirror. I mean, when you get to that point, it's all you're going to be thinking about. Yep. And he doesn't know this. He's unconscious of this, I'm sure. But that is what this is all Mm -hmm. supposed to do. It's all supposed to get everyone Mm -hmm. so fucking wound up and so full of self-shame that they're turning themselves to their bishop and re-establishing their uh, sense of dependence on the church to cleanse them of this great evil that they feel about themselves all the time. It's fucking sinister. Yep. Gets worse. (laughs) I'm going to keep saying that. When in bed, if that is where you have your problem for the most part, dress yourself for the night so securely that you cannot easily touch your vital parts. And so that it would be difficult and time-consuming for you to remove these clothes. Just like mummy wrapped for bed. (laughs) Just in a sauna suit. I mean, that sounds like a really sweaty time. By the time you started to remove protective clothing, you would have sufficiently controlled your thinking that the temptation would leave you. I love Wear thinking of cup, Spencer W. Drops, Kimball jockstrap. just in like 12 layers at night. This is just creating and accentuating a chastity kink. Yeah, 100%. If the temptation... Trust me, I know. <laughs> if the temptation seems overpowering while you're in bed... Get out of bed and go into the kitchen and fix yourself a snack, even if it is in the middle of the night, and even if you are not hungry, and despite your fears of gaining weight. <laughs> is that what it says? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, it's better to 
to gain weight than to masturbate, so... Then at least when you look at yourself in the mirror, you won't be aroused and tempted to masturbate, which will lead you to homosexuality. But if you're a pure perfect person, you would never gain weight, because never. that is also bad, but yeah. we'll allow it. <laughs> the purpose behind this suggestion is that you get your mind on something else. You are the subject of your thoughts, so to speak. I mean, that's also kind of just telling people to use food <laughs> as a coping mechanism, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm all for a late night snack, but I don't think it's very healthy when someone's like all riled up to just like go to food as a dish. I mean, the that Mormon just feels... sugar complex, yeah. baby. <laughs> Finally, never read pornographic material. Never. I love hearing old timey people talk about pornography as I something know. that you read. He'd be so pissed in today's world. <laughs> never read about your problem. Isn't this reading about your problem? Yeah, what the fuck? Keep it out of mind. Keep it out of mind while you keep your bars <laughs> five to six minutes. While you send out letters to the church to be read from the pulpit. And you're <laughs> snacking in the middle of the night every night just to fucking survive. Yeah, um. good luck keeping it out of your mind. Again, who is, what is masturbation hurting? What is it hurting? You say, oh, oh it, you're, you're, you're spiritually deplorable now and you're weak and you're so, like, but what is it doing? Who is it hurting? It's not. The only reason people feel shame is because you tell them they have to. Remember, first a thought, then an act. The thought pattern must be changed. You must not allow this problem to remain in your mind. Oh, easy. Fucking yep, easy. Yep, just relegate it to the realm of the unconscious so that it can pop up in dysfunctional ways when you're not paying attention. Great. Awesome. Cool. When you accomplish that, you soon will be free of the act. So, I mean, the classic Mormon thing of just contradictory advice so that, as you said, everyone stays trapped in the shame cycle. Because this advice is probably the worst advice you can give <laughs> if you want people to not jerk off. Because it's got, it, they're obsessively thinking about it. Don't they're obsessively about it. worried that even like looking in the mirror might cause it to happen. <laughs> it's like when someone's like, don't come yet. And you're like, ah, 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 ah. Okay, I actually <laughs> uh, should have said that earlier. Sorry, everyone, if this is annoying. It was actually Apostle Mark E. Peterson who gave all that advice, not Spencer W. Kimball. Oh, he's the one of uh, tying yourself to the bed fame. Yes, he wrote a guide called Overcoming Masturbation, a guide to <laughs> self-control, which isn't that reading about your problem? It sounds like it. So Mark goes on. He really dove into this topic. I, this deeply. is Mark E. Peterson, who famously advocated for segregation. He wanted the races to be divided to their own kind. It's like, don't think about black people. Then they won't be a problem in your life. Yeah. He's just like, if I see a black them. person with a Cadillac, I feel happy for him. I just don't want, to driving, I don't want him driving it in my neighborhood. Did he say that? Yes. God. Okay. So he's giving more advice. He's got a lot of advice. He says, as one meets with his priesthood leader, a program for overcoming masturbation can be implemented using some of the suggestions, which follows. You can, you know, a church was set up by sexual predators, which it literally was, <clears throat> when you have to just talk to some random dude about all the intimate details of your sex life. Hate and it, it, hate I mean, it. as you know, this, even though most of these things use he language about the person with the masturbation problem. Spencer did say earlier that he was talking about men and women who will have this problem. So if you're a woman, you're always going to have to be confessing to a man. Awesome. Great. Cool. As you said, I really feel like this obsessive Sorry. focus on masturbation does make it a lot more likely that that's going to become like an erotic focus for people. So then to have these men listening to women tell them about their problems, it just makes me want to vomit. Absolutely. Anyway. It's set up. It's all set up for this. So this is the advice he gives to like priesthood leaders and their bishops for helping young men work through these problems. These are just some of the suggestions I picked out that were my favorite because there were a lot. One, when the temptation to masturbate is strong, yell, stop to those thoughts as loudly as you can in your mind and then recite a pre-chosen scripture or sing an inspirational hymn. Hold to the rod, the eye shit. <laughs> so aren't you wiring yourself Come to thou find thou found. <laughs> It's basically just like wire your sexuality with your spirituality. So every time you're singing hymns, it's also there. It's just all tied together all the time. The church oh, yeah. is owning your sexuality at that point. Yep. It is important to turn your thoughts away from the selfish need to indulge. Selfish. Because <laughs> it's hurting a lot of people. Uh, two. How dare you hurt? You hurt me every time you masturbate. <laughs> be outgoing and friendly. Force yourself to be with others and learn to enjoy it working and talking to them. Use principles of developing friendships found in books, such as How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Dale wrote that book. Wow, are they, do they get, are they splitting the funds there? A lot of free advertising. Know. That is actually a good book, just Dale's outside of this. Dale's not Mormon though, is he? He actually might be. I don't feel like... I don't, I don't think he is, but it's very much like along the Stephen R. Covey, like... 
Mormon self-improvement sphere. I think it's always impressive when Mormons recommend any book that wasn't written by a Mormon. Oh, yeah. In the field of psychotherapy, there is a very effective technique called aversion therapy. Psychotherapy, which other leaders, including probably him, have condemned for being the church of the devil and for teaching people that come to them with sexual shame... Yeah, yeah, Bruce R. McConkie literally says yeah. that. <laughs> when we associate or think of something very distasteful with something which has been pleasurable but undesirable, the distasteful thought and feeling will begin to cancel out that which was pleasurable. Oh my god, this is literally him advocating conversion therapy. If you associate something very distasteful with your loss of self-control, it will help you to stop the act. For example, if you are tempted to masturbate, think of having to bathe in a tub of worms and eating several of them as you do the act. I just can't imagine Christ. that fucking helping. It's not going to work. I'm what like, has, have you applied any of this advice? That just sounds like a Jack Wayland pie in the sky idea of something that might help someone to just think of eating worms. It explains why he's got worms for brains. <laughs> during, we're back to the toilet. During your toileting and shower activities, leave the bathroom door or shower curtain partly open to discourage being alone in total privacy. Take cool, brief showers. Then, like, who are you living with that's going to be fine with you just having the bathroom door open all the time? This is, a, like, literal cult shit that you makes you scared to be too alone mm-hmm. lest you fall victim to your body's own existence. Mm-hmm. Spooky as shit. I Next hate all this. Next piece of advice. Arise immediately in the mornings. Do not lie in bed awake, no matter what time of day it is. Get up and do something. Start each day with an enthusiastic activity. Keep your bladder empty. <laughs> Why? Because you'll see your penis too much when you have to pee. Like, well, what, when you what's gotta the pee, there, it presses I up know, against the male yeah. G spot. There's yeah. just uh... imagine like dehydrating <laughs> yourself so that you so you're up like midnight snacking, but you're also supposed to dehydrate yourself. You're gonna be so thirsty. I'm, I have to do a like Mormon live stream. Like I'm handcuffed to the bed. I'm fully dehydrated. <laughs> Anything to not masturbate. I'm talking to you, my friends. Do a little live stream. This is like the level of commitment bodybuilders have to bring to competitions. You know, like dehydrating themselves before. Oh yeah, the anti the the no fap Olympics. Refrain <laughs> from drinking large amounts of fluids before retiring. Reduce the amount. Oh my god. Reduce the amount of spices and condiments in your food. This is from the era of when the cornflakes guy. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is giving cornflakes. This Joseph, is giving Kellogg. <laughs> was it Joseph Kellogg? Is that was that his I name? Don't in my mind, name, I just thought Joseph Cornflakes. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Anyway, the inventor of cornflakes originally invented them, if you don't know, because he thought that bland food would help people not masturbate. So this is of the same school of thought. The Lord's anointed, inspiration from heaven, giving the best advice for the sin next to murder. You know how they call us snowflakes for, like, not thinking gay people should, like, be shot uh, or legally discriminated against? Like, Like, no wonder Mormons have no palate for spice. I think we should call the other side (laughs) cornflakes. This is a nut, so again, trying to sap you of any joy. Mm-hmm. Any pleasure. So that Classic you can focus stuff. all your attention on the church. He also says, eat as lightly as possible at night. But before he was saying, snack in the middle of the night, even if you're not hungry. You know. So where's this going? And whatever also, it why? takes to not masturbate. If that takes not eating, that's great. If it takes eating, great. Why would eating as lightly as possible in his mind? Is it because you would be less likely to have to go to the bathroom? Probably, and then you're up in the up in the night. Up in the night. It's just you and Satan <laughs> facing off. <laughs> it all started with an innocent poo, and before I knew it, <laughs> I was spilling my seed. It started off with a snack. How did it end up like this? Wear pajamas that are difficult to open, yet loose and not binding. Avoid people, situations, pictures, or reading materials that might create sexual excitement. It is sometimes helpful to have a physical object to use in overcoming this problem. <laughs> what that means? <laughs> what kind of object? Oh, a book of Mormon, firmly held in hand, <laughs> even in bed at night, has proven helpful in extreme cases. Oh my! So you're Lord. you're in your really tight twelve layers. You're starving. You're dehydrated. You're clutching your book of Mormon. I keep All it. Sounds I very keep healthy. my book of Mormon open, firmly on my genital love making area. <laughs> like, sorry, this is God's plan of happiness. Is this this? this God. In very severe cases, it may be necessary to tie a hand to the bed frame with a tie <laughs> in order that the habit of masturbating in a semi-sleep condition can be broken. 
Congrats, Mark. You just gave a whole generation a bondage kink. I'm gonna go tie myself to a bed after this. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna have the biggest meal and it's gonna be so <laughs> spicy. <laughs> and? Sam, don't. You might masturbate. Modern women must be wanking up a storm because they all have Stanley Cups and they are all hydrated and drinking swig all the time. Can you imagine? Is this why men from the 80s don't drink water? Probably. <laughs> Hydration, that's petting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, this is like reading the handbook from The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> mm -hmm. So four, full thing that has been banned in woman bedrooms. It's just anything too kinky, right? Sex toys, anal, anything that is not PMV sex. Not cool. And by the way, kinky is a term used to mean anything that is sensual, enjoyable, yeah. pleasurable mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. If you're enjoying it, you're doing it wrong. If you're having fun in this life, if you're extracting any joy from it whatsoever, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to save all your pleasure for the next life when you have sex with your millions of polygamous wives. Wives, sorry, you never get to enjoy it. I know, it's like, God, you're allowed to have a fucking polygamy kink or like a fucking child bride kink. So, in 1996, Boyd K... I can't believe I've watched Boyd K. Packer talk at conference. Like, been in the room with him. With this guy. <laughs> and, and soaked it up. Anyway, in 1996... I think I went to his funeral. Ew. It was either his... Oh, maybe... No, it was Joseph B. Worthland that I went to. Never mind. So, Boyd K. Packer but said sure he it. was an apostle at the time. I also... I always love going through quotes like this because you just realize how, like, most of conference throughout time has just always been focused on the most bullshit stuff like this. There's never been anything real. It's always just been, like, the arbitrary made-up things that keep people in the shame cycles. We never get on to anything real. Oh, no. Boyd says, What if the person asking you to engage in something defiling is your husband, whom you love? A married couple may be tempted to introduce things into their relationship which are unworthy. Do not, as the scriptures warn, change the natural use into that which is against nature. If you do, the tempter will drive a wedge between you. <laughs> Having enjoyable sex with your wife, that's going to drive a wedge between you. Yep, you will hate each other if you enjoy sex together. In 1986, Elder Spencer J. Condy wrote an article for the Enzyme called Finding Marital Unity Through the Scriptures and said... Unfortunately, some married couples fail to realize that sexual experiences were never intended to, by the Lord to be a mere plaything or merely to satisfy passions and lusts. When couples engage in physical intimacy devoid of emotional and spiritual intimacy, or when they participate in unholy practices, what should be a spiritually bonding element in their marriage may actually become a disruptive force. I think it's interesting how he says, if you have sex that is devoid of emotional intimacy, because I have such a hard time imagining these guys saying this shit, being like emotionally connected lovers. Like, oh, I no. just can't imagine it. Absolutely I, I not. feel like they're just like pump and dump, it's she's just a toy for me and then it's over and we don't make eye contact. Like it's very hard to imagine it being like this beautiful, and she's just like, my wifely duties, I'll think of yeah. my grocery list until this is over in five seconds. In 2003, Elder Bruce C. Hafen said, please be, a 2003, please be aware of unnatural sexual acts that are just as immoral, if not worse than traditional fornication or adultery. Like what? What could be worse than the sin next to murder? Are you talking about murdering your spouse Can out of lust? <laughs> President Spencer W. Kimball also said, there are some people who have said that behind the bedroom doors, anything goes. That is not true, and the Lord would not condone it. This is but it's fine for fucking prophets to marry kids and then tell them to not tell their sisters about it because they're fucking them too. And I would tell you not to tell your parents, but your parents are gone. I sent your dad on a mission That's after your mom died. Your mom. <laughs> That's some Keith Raniere shit. Yeah. This is coming from the church that wears... Uh, special magical underwear that had holes in the genital region I to talk about this, yeah. so that you could have sex with your underwear still on. Okay, I just heard John DeLynn was talking about that the other day. I actually didn't, I thought that was like folklore. I didn't realize that oh, the, no. the garments actually did used to have holes. Was it taught in oh, oh, yeah, official yeah. settings that you should have sex with your garments on? I mean, certainly from like, I mean, because in the 1800s, the garments went to the to the wrists and the ankles, and you are not supposed to remove it. Um, I, I heard of people who would take showers holding their garments no. so that there was never a point where no. it was not touching their skin. 
Sure. And I would say that that has shifted now. There are certainly Mormons who have sex without oh, yeah. the garment. Uh, most. And that, yeah. It's like, what is it? Sex, sweat, and swim. The Mormons are like, you can take your garments off. But that has not always been the case. Mm. Spooky, but not a cult. We're just a normal religion a that cult. loves Jesus. <laughs> it's like in the Keith Raniere documentary, all of his supporters, who still support him after finding out that he had sex with 15-year-old, 12-year-olds by other accounts, they, um, one of their arguments is like, everyone wants to call us a sex cult, but it, it's not a sex cult. Like, it was also a walking group, or like, it was, <laughs> we did so much self-development, and they, they're so outraged mm. at the idea that the world would just reduce their group to sex cult. And I feel like it's similar with Mormonism. It's like, well, you are a sex cult, you know what I mean? Like, that's what the men in power were using their power for, was sex. So... Yes. How can you say it's not a sex cult? I mean, that just... Our religious book club can have a little sex cult as a treat. (laughs) (laughs) Cannot have any sex as a treat. (laughs) And they'll even say, we're not a sex cult, we're not obsessed, but we don't have a lot of sex. And it's like, it's because it controls your sex life. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it Mm -hmm. that way. And was set up so that those people with their controlled sex life could be easily preyed right. on by those who were getting their full of sex from everybody that they wanted, including underage people. I mean, you see cults where um, the leader decides who you marry. And to Mormons, that would just be horrifying, you know, that kind of arranged mm. marriage. But first of all, that has happened in Mormonism because prophets would go to people and be like, the Lord has commanded that I take you as my wife, child. And if you say no, you'll be destroyed and the gates will be closed against you forever. Yeah, and your whole just... family's salvation will be gone. So that has happened. But it's like, you in Mormonism... you. It, you have to go to like male leaders to be given permission to have sex because you have to get married and they give you the permission to get married in the temple and just all of it, you know? Like it is a sex cult because you're give, your sexuality is other people's concern more than it needs to be. I imagine most bishops spend a lot of their time, one-on-one time with members talking about sex because that's the main source of shame. So the conclusion of this video is that Mormonism is a sex cult. Prove us wrong. Seriously, (laughs) prove us wrong in the comments if you think you can. Most RMs are familiar with, like, have some little thing to deflect. They're like, well, they every technically any small new religion is a cult. So there, are, what are you saying that every religion is a is a cult? And it's like, yeah, pretty much, <laughs> with varying degrees of harmfulness, obviously. And the newer ones uh, often tend to be the most predatory, and not to you know. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's why Keith Ranieri's group, Nexium, is considered a sex cult for all the same reasons mm-hmm. that Mormonism is. Yeah, male leaders coercing or forcing female followers into sexual relationships, possibly with the help of female lieutenants. It, Joseph Smith. Ding, ding, like, ding, ding, ding. That ding, video ding. of those guys trying to roast me by saying I'd be a recruiter wife. I was like, I'm like, imagine thinking that you're owning me by saying that. That's crazy. <laughs> what a but tale. yeah, in Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, Keith Raniere, all these guys ha- usually do have women that help them carry out their work. Like the patriarchy is upheld by women. And again, it's just like God could have, as if, as fucking if God would make, restore his church and have the le- the founder of it do the exact same shit that le- male leaders of all sex cults do. The exact mm-hmm. same stuff. This- With no explanation. This is such, like, you know, in the same way that they'll call things like evil, pernicious lies that you can sin and enjoy it. I'm like, this is an evil, fucking, pernicious lie mm-hmm. that your sent your innate eroticism is a detriment to your spirituality. I absolutely hate that and defy that. Like, your eroticism is the root of your spirituality, and the reason they don't want you exercising it is because they want to be in control of you so that you can keep paying, praying, obeying. I fucking hate it. I hate that I lost so much of my life to this. On that note... On that note, if you enjoyed this video and you want to help us make more like it, support the channel, then we have Patreon, where we also have bonus videos. We also have other ways you can support the channel, like PayPal and Venmo, which are in the description box. We also have merch, we also have our candle. These are crazy times for YouTubers, so we just really appreciate anything you guys do to help us, even if that's just liking this video, leaving a comment, subscribing. If you're not already, we're supposed to tell people to subscribe. Oh yeah. And also, same goes for the people who hated this video, but for the right reasons. You can smash the dislike, makes no difference. (laughs) Um, Apparently when people subscribe, like after watching it, because a lot of people that watch our YouTube videos aren't subscribed, but if people subscribe after watching a video, the video will rank higher, because YouTube's like, oh, this is a video that gets people to watch more YouTube. 
So yeah, it actually does make a difference if you're unsubscribed. And we'd love to hear your experiences. I'm sure there are gonna be so many stories you guys have of fucked up things you heard leaders say related to sex. I mean, this is all the stuff that's on the books, but there's even, there's a ton of other stuff that just like local leaders will just spout and it will get perpetuated. Oh and yeah. There's just so much. The church is so obsessed with sex. Tell us in the comments and we'll tell you if you're worthy to go to heaven. I hope you all have a good day. Remember to wear loose fitting, but hard to get off pajamas tonight. Don't be afraid to get a snack in the middle of the night if you're tempted to. Cuff yourself to the bed if you gotta. Book okay, a woman in one hand, cuffed in the other. Yeah. <laughs> Snap. That's what we mean by cuffing season. <laughs> love bye, you, bye, love you guys. Okay, one more final thought that I forgot to mention in this video. I made a reel about it the other day, but going back to Mormonism being a sex cult, Mormons make so many more sexual comments than regular oh, adults. Yeah. If you hang out with a Mormon married couple, they make so many sex jokes. Like they feel the need like to let you know that they are having sex. Yeah, juvenile sex jokes. Those of us who are not in the church, and have, we're not just constantly bringing it up, you know, <laughs> but they just, they feel the need to constantly be like, yeah, 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 we're cool, we have sex. I am because I'm recovering from the trauma, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're funny enough, it's allowed, but yeah. yeah it, I do think it's interesting. Or like I played Cards Against Humanity with a group of Mormons. They made things even way more sexual than they needed to be. It's like they wanted to take it to a sexual place so much more than I did because that's what happens when you repress something it just comes out more in other ways. Especially if you're the evil one that they know they can let it go a little mm. bit. Oh yeah. 